If you had 30 minutes to hide from a nuclear blast, where would you go? I'd always heard a basement of a library is good, because books may absorb some radiation. Make sure you don't break your glasses. There was time now. It's just not fair. I would probably go to the bank, and ask to go to where I stored valuables. Rob's bank put me, and they lll the money in the vault then shut the door. I'm seeing a flaw in this plan. Hello. Anyone. The Eisenhower Tunnel on I-70 in Colorado 1. 7 miles long, unless it turns into Stephen King's The Stand. I'm in Colorado so good to know. I just figured I'd go towards mountains I guess. Sort of planless in this situation though. The nearest city is over 30 miles away, and it's all open country from where I am, and for at least another 10 miles to the mountains in the other direction. Either I'd jump in the truck, and try to make it to the mountains through the res or crawl under the house and hope for the best. Probably best to just hunker down. At that distance, you shouldn't be in the kill zone. Maybe a shockwave will blow out your windows. Best to hunker down, and seal up the place, so fallout can't get in. Then you just wait a few weeks for the major radiation to die down. Hide? I ain't getting drafted for WW3 this bomb gonna send me. There would be no draft. World War 3 would be over in about 30 minutes. I would find the nearest elementary school and hide under one of the desks. Anyway, that's what we were taught when I was in elementary school. And cover. There's a building at the college I work at that goes 80 feet underground, and has 6 foot thick inward sloping concrete walls I'll be in there. Got a big ol' NMR in there? I've been in a room like at my university. It's literally built to shield from as much external radiation as possible to make the measurements more accurate. Would definitely double as a bunker. Not my pick though. I have cleithrophobia. First cousin of claustrophobia. I ain't getting. Stuck underground in a thick concrete coffin no thanks. Cleithrophobia. I didn't realize this was a phobia, until you posted I always just said I was claustrophobic, but reading what cleithrophobia means it explains my f peeped up dreams way better. For the lazy, here's a definition. What is a cleithrophobia? Cleithrophobia, the fear of being trapped, is often confused with claustrophobia. The fear of enclosed spaces. Cleithrophobia is related to winter phobias due to the potential risk of being trapped underneath the snow drift or thin ice. Subway system slash sewer system. Underground basically. Metro 2033 intensifies. Artem. It's good to see you. Here's three bullets and a gas mask. That should be everything you could possibly need. Oh and don't forget to collect filters everywhere you go. Or suffer. Man I love the Metro series. There is an old building near me, that has a basement. I know what boards, to move to get into the basement from the outside. It's the only building I know of within about 100 miles, that is entirely reinforced brick masonry with a basement. And I'm sure I'd spend the apocalyptic event chatting with several homeless people who also know about the board. We'd all survive though. Right answer. This is how my mom's friend's son survived Hiroshima. He was taking a break in the basement when the bomb hit. His classmate who was still outside was severely burned and later died. I saw some old civil death and stuff from the 50s that suggested doing the same thing. Edit. Fix details. People survived less than one quarter mile from Air Zero at Hiroshima, just by being inside concrete structures. Like the Bank of Japan building. The simple earth and shelters that dotted the city would have been adequate to save many lives, had the population not been desensitized to air raid warnings. The lady that used to do my taxes told me that her daughter and family were in Hawaii when the false alarm went out. They got into bed with their small children and watched kids movies, waiting to die, but keeping the kids unaware and happy. This went on for some time. That's so sad. It's really sad. But like what are you supposed to do? In a nuclear war, how are you supposed to keep your kids happy and healthy? Very easily? That's a good point. 
especially depending how young they are they probably couldn't even wrap their minds around what is about to happen, so I guess it's better to not have them spend their last minutes like that. I just can't imagine. Meanwhile, my Russian parents told me all about nuclear bombs when I was 5, and I was living with the fear and recurring nightmares of nuclear war until I was an adult. LOL. Pretty easy. I would just go to my nearest bomb shelter. They are all over the place here in Finland and can house up to 4 million people so more than enough room for the entire urban population. Every metro station also doubles as a bomb shelter, and I can walk to one of those within 10 minutes, so I would probably chill there. There are probably a bunch of shelters even closer to me though, but could be busy. You can actually walk across a lot of Helsinki center completely underground I often do, when it is raining. The underground network of tunnels is huge. And all bomb proof. Finland actually has one of the most thorough civil defense programs in the world. Egg in new development projects. Property owners must include a civil defense shelter in buildings of at least 1200 m2. Finland got everything covered damn. Might have something to do with being a western aligned neighbor of the Soviet Union during that whole cold war thing. Oh god did I miss something in the news today. No not that I know of just was playing Fallout and thought of that haha. <laughs> My man. To bed for a 30 minute nap. Jack off and nap. Might as well make it a personal day. Like when everyone in Hawaii thought they were going to get hit by ballistic missiles. To the liquor store. So I could hide from my problems the way I always do. My man. I'd probably climb up onto my roof with a lawn chair and a cold beer and watch everything go to speep. Can't watch once you're blinded by the initial blast. I'll bring sunglasses. You got me there. There's a fallout shelter in a bank about a mile down from where I live that was built back in the 60s. I'd probably yoink some snacks and a bottle of Jack from the kitchen and sprint down there, then hunker down for a few days. If it's locked, then, well, I can polish off the Jack and wait for the fireworks. Ig I'm going to dig the deepest trench possible in 30 minutes. Never dig straight down. Well according to this film by the National Cleanup, Paint Up, Fix Up Bureau, my best bet is to wait inside a house that has been coated with a fresh coat of good, American, paint and varnish. A grocery store, eat everything you can before you die. Bring out the inner Matt Stoney. I would go buy all the frozen pizzas I could carry and head to the flavor zone. My reasoning is beyond your understanding. You mean. My seasoning is beyond your understanding. I work at a nuclear pharmacy which has decimeters, Geiger counters, potassium iodide tablets, radiac spray, PPE and lead, and the break room slash office is an extra vault that was made to house a particle accelerator known as a cyclotron. I'm at work right now. So, assuming I'm safe from the initial blast radius, I'd probably go sit at my desk. Scroll through reddit and watch the world end. This actually happened to me. Sort of. My wife and I were in Hawaii. Near Pearl Harbor. In 2018 when the ballistic missile alert showed up on my phone. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. It said. For a minute I thought it was fake. But why take the chance? I'd lived in Hawaii before. And decided to get as far away from Pearl Harbor as I could before mass panic set in. I drove east towards Kaniar. There's a tunnel through a mountain and I stopped in the middle. We were the second car to stop, and within a few minutes the entire tunnel was full. After about 30 more minutes a friend of mine in Kaniar texted that it had been mistake. He'd had his wife lie down in the bathtub while he watched the TV for updates. It was a pretty frightening experience. Yes, I remember this day also. I was about to head to the beach with some friends for a barbecue, and I was telling my parents goodbye, and that I loved them. Right before we stepped out of the door, everything went silent as all of our phones simultaneously went off with the warning. It was terrifying. 
My father is ex-military, and he just sat down. My mother, who has terrible anxiety, sat next to him. They said nothing. My friends and I shared a glance at each other, sat down, and they each called their family to say goodbye. It was surreal. After everything got confirmed as a false alarm, we still went to the beach. Most surreal experience I've ever had. Sounds so horrible. That whole thing was so crazy. I thought it'd be relieved I was with M family. Not getting to say goodbye really is a big fear of mine. Many years ago before my mom died, we agreed to always share a hug, kiss on the cheek and actually say I love you every time we met and left. We did that for many years, and when she died I had no regrets of unspoken feelings. Leave every encounter with your love expressed. It's not too late. My mom and I have a secret code word we use for I love you, and we'll always be together, and I dread knowing I won't hear that word one day. I'll likely hear it, and not even know it's the last time I ever do. Under the blankets. Nothing can get you under there. Nothing. Including the air that I need to breathe after 5 minutes. Source. Was once a child. Ed go outside and wait to die I'm not gonna deal with that speep. Yeah. Anybody remember the firefighters from Chernobyl? I'll take vaporization over taking a week to melt into a flesh puddle. Thank you very much. I'm sorry what? What do I type to look this up? Because that's caught my interest and wouldn't mind reading more on that. You might want to type Hesashi Ouchi on it to learn some more about nuclear damage and melting skin. I'd try to do that guy jacking off from Pompey thing I feel like someone should pay that forward. So everyone can see the x-rayed imprint of your jacking on the wall for centuries? And become the cause of speculation that people that lived during the apocalypse had tiny penises? No thanks. He doesn't need to wait for the explosion. The burn is already right here. I'm not within death radius of any place that could plausibly be nuked. Even if someone decided to go abs off peeping glutly nuts on us in Australia and sent 10 nukes at Melbourne, I can't see them hitting Frankston, Cranbourne and Mornington, the three closest semi-plausible targets. I'd shelter in place. I live about 15 minutes away from one of the largest air force bases in my entire country. If my country went to nuclear war my house would definitely be destroyed. Yeah I live less than a kilometer from the airport and in military operated housing. Safe to say I'll be dead. I think I'd find a chain link fence near a playground. Might as well go out the way I lived. Embracing my knowledge of useless pop culture references like it's a talent. The afterlife. The nuclear blast won't be able to kill me if I kill myself first. I wonder how many people killed themselves as a result of the Hawaii incident in 2018. None that I could find. But one guy had a heart attack. I'd go have a pint at the Winchester and wait for the whole thing to blow over. Not even gonna stop for Liz. A fridge. That fridge is made from lead. There is an old library built in the 1960s less than a mile from my house with a basement fallout shelter. I know because I always see the old 1960s fallout shelter signs and consider stealing one, but the potential of getting caught and being banned from the library for the rest of my life stops me every time. I'd grab a six pack, grab a chair and sit outside calling my family and friends while waiting for the end. I'm not suicidal, but any world that would exist after my city gets bombed would be unrecognizable and probably not worth surviving for. If I knew it was coming, I'd just drive away. Distance makes all the difference with nuclear blasts. I'm close to mountains in the outer suburbs of a big city. I'd drive in that mountain direction as we often have wines from there. Minimal fallout that way too. If leaving the city was not an option. I'd just hit up my basement. It's below ground enough that I think I'd be fairly safe. Drive away from the blast. It should take less than 30 minutes to get out of the blast area. Not where I'm from. You'd get to the next set of bastard traffic lights. 
I'd gather my dogs and cats and go up to our bedroom and cuddle my husband. Give the doggies and kitties some treats on the bed and hope they don't jump off so that my last moments are a cuddle fest.